So I did a quiz. Oh, yeah. So it's a dog breed selector. So it matches dog breeds to your personality. So I got matched with five breeds. Oh, the my first goodness. one is the Saint Berdoodle. <laughs> oh, Saint Berdoodle. Is it a St. Yeah. Bernard looking doodle? Yeah. Is it the size of a doodle or a St. Bernard? Well, I guess it's full depending on the poodle, right? Yeah. The size of the poodle. Yeah. So I got matched with that. I got matched with a poodle. <laughs> And then I got matched with a schnoodle. A sh- <laughs> Welcome to Let's Boop Snoots. Welcome. I'm Heidi. And I'm Vero. And we're going to boop snoots. We're going to boop snoots. <laughs> we're going to boop snoots. Who going to boop? Are we going to boop? Boop. So- so we, I had a couple of different experiences, well, not a couple of different ones, one main experience this past week that we wanted to talk about, which is bringing us back to the topic of pet nutrition, because we, we also want to discuss another article that we found. Um, any other updates before we get into the meat and potatoes? <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like a Ralph update? Are you asking for a Ralph update? I, I, I haven't seen him since he was like a pup because we've been I in, know. in the lockdown. And you sent me a photo the other night and he looks so big. They grow I up know. so fast. He is getting big. Yeah? Yeah, but he's so good. Yeah? He's a good puppy. Oh. I he's starting to lose him. his teeth. Yeah? He, he lost two teeth. Teeth <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> he lost his teeth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was. So I was doing some work at the table and I could hear him like chewing. Ugh. So he had like a loose tooth, but it was still a little bit attached. Yeah. It was Gross. just like chewing on it. <laughs> and I tried to pull it out and I couldn't. It was too slippery. <laughs> so, I re- yeah. I remember. Yeah. Um. um my husband's mom told me a story about a dog that they had a long time ago and he was a puppy and they were playing tug of war with him with like a blanket or whatever. (laughs) And Matt's dad like pulled the blanket and it came out of his mouth and there was a bunch of teeth on it. Oh my (laughs) God. His his puppy teeth came out. So he was like, "Ah, ah!" (laughs) Oh Oh, my God. That would freak me out. I never saw any teeth. Like I, I knew I saw that Gibbon lost like a tooth here and there, but you hear people have different stories where it's like, they just find teeth like laying around their house and they're like, what the heck? Yeah. I haven't found one. I've seen two like really loose ones that I've tried to pull out, but no go. Too too slippery. Too slippery. (laughs) Them teeth are are slippy little suckers. (laughs) Yes. And he has like bad breath. So I'm wondering if it's like the teething and like the blood and. Oh yeah. That could be. Maybe. Yeah. Dogs Stinky. Bad breath sometimes, though. Stanky. So we've been taking Ralph to the park mm-hmm. with other puppies around, mm-hmm. like, his age, mm-hmm. including Mochi, his cousin. Yes. And Bear, the mm-hmm. old old grumpy man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the first time Ralph saw Bear, Ralph was younger. And Bear is just, like I said, like, just grumpy. Mm-hmm. So Bear would just kind of, like... <laughs> Like, just did not let Ralph go close to him. And Ralph was scared. Yeah. Um, But you could see that Ralph kind of, like, wanted to play with him. Yeah. But at the dog park, Mm -hmm. Ralph is just, like, terrorizing him. Like, he does this. No, Ralph terrorizes Bear. Yeah, Ralph terror. (laughs) Yeah. But, like, he doesn't hurt him. So what he does, he'll, like, get close to him. And then he, like, flails is, like, his front legs in front of himself. Like, oh. it's kind of weird. And his head is, like, all over the place. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> and Bear's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's just, like, pushing his buttons. Yeah, beep, Ralph beep, is beep. like, look, I did a dance for you. <laughs> <laughs> he only only does that for Bear. <laughs> that is so funny. It's kind of funny. It's cute to watch. That is so funny. Uh, what else about Ralph? Um, he got his last uh, set of vaccines. Mm-hmm. Yay! Yay! 
Yay. And we do like this detox thing after and he gets really bad diarrhea. Oh. Like really bad. Oh no. Yeah. From the like vaccines? Like what or from the I think detox? it's from the detox. So what's a detox? It's like a herbal thing. I don't know if it actually does anything, but Who it does it, give him is, diarrhea. <laughs> and is, <laughs> and was that the, recommended from your holistic vet? Yeah. Huh. So I know Adored Beast has like anti vaccinosis yeah that you can give after a vaccine Mm -hmm. and it gets rid of all like the toxic things that are in vaccines but i guess it's something similar oh okay yeah but it's interesting really really bad diarrhea like it's like a watery oh so i don't know i don't know if i want to keep doing it yeah yeah that's a tough one well how many more vaccines does he have to does he have to go he has his rabies vaccine and then that's it. Okay. When's that? But then do I wait till he gets his rabies vaccine and then just do one last detox? Well, you could. Maybe the diarrhea is the expulsion of all those detox. Well, probably. Maybe he's purging out the bad stuff. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to I say. I just feel bad for him. Like he's fine. Like he's yeah. has energy. Yeah. He's not going every like hour. Like he it's, goes like three it's times. Funny a day. that we can't have an episode where we talk about food without saying diarrhea, which <laughs> which is the reality of it. Yep, it's the reality of uh of the food. Doggos, which uh, which brings us to um the experience that I had this yes in the past couple of weeks. So um on a past episode I mentioned um that Gibbs had got the pancreatitis from eating birdseed uh, up at the cottage unsupervised by my father <laughs> and came back and ha- was like vomiting diarrhea, could not keep anything down for days to the point where we were like, all right, it's, we need to take him to the vet and drew up some blood, blood work, which confirmed the pancreatitis concern and so we had to put him on a gastrointestinal food from the vet a science hills diet and one of the worst rated foods around (laughs) and i didn't want to put him on that food and it did make him like his system a little bit better and he obviously recovered from it we fed him like rice and beef first and and then i was like all right let's try this food um while i look for a better quality like food that's low fat because I had a quick discussion with the vet and said that we'd also always had these problems with Gibbon, like since the beginning, like he never, ever, ever has a solid poop, like hardly, hardly ever. So hardly, hardly. <laughs> ever. <laughs> and um, we had him on a super high quality food, so I couldn't understand it. But like what the vet said is that, yes, it's a high quality food, but it could be that it's a bit too rich for his system. So I was like, okay, so I had him on a canna and I started looking for like a lighter or leaner or lower fat, like a can of food, which there wasn't really one. Like I looked at all the um, nutrition labels on the bags and there wasn't one where I could find like a lower or one that was less rich for him. So I went to the food store and then started talking with this woman who was like, um, no, I had a dog who was very similar. She's like, a can is a great product, but it, like, if you're, if you're looking for protein, absolutely you won't beat it. But there's some dogs where it's just too rich for their system and like, they just can't like process it well. So she recommended another brand of food that was called Merrick and they have this line called limited ingredient, um, food. So, um, the other concern I had is that Gibbon is very slim and his weight fluctuates like very easily. Like when he gets into a spell of like vomiting and stuff, he starts losing the weight like immediately. And he's a very active dog, like runs like crazy at the cottage. So in the summertime, especially it's hard to keep the weight on him. So I was like, I couldn't figure out what to do. Cause I, I was like low fat to me means like low cal. So how am I going to keep him at an optimal weight on a, good quality food so I was like all right and she said with the Merrick so I remember her telling me with this and I think I spoke about this on the episode too but uh, Merrick has this um complimentary 
what canned food that you can use to boost to like if you need some extra like calories and stuff like this and she she had told me that she had attended a conference where it's like they took a can of like campbell's like chunky soup or something like that and then what? a can of this stuff and she was telling me that it was like red apron chefs that make this line of like wet dog food for dogs and that they didn't have people like tasting it obviously but that <laughs> They had two of them in a bowl and were asking people, like, look at it, smell it, whatever, which one would you eat? And that 90% of people chose the dog food over Campbell's Chunky <laughs> Soup. And I was like, oh, my God, Ooh. seriously? And she was like, no. She's like, I'm telling you. She's like, I crack the can to this. And I'm like, man, I like, I would I would eat that. Like, it smells good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. So I bought, like, a, a can or two of the wet stuff as well. Anyways, so... We started giving <laughs> no. <laughs> so we started giving on this new limited ingredient. And it was like a chicken and brown rice. And we had them like on a beef formula with the Yakana. Uh, so I went for something a bit lighter. So we started feeding him that. So he transitioned to it and his poops were like still like a little bit soft, but like definitely not solid. And we were like, okay, well, he's transitioning. And then we kept him on that for a few weeks. And still, it's like nine out of 10 times he's he is not having like a solid poop. So I was just like at a loss for words. So I was like, well, maybe this. So then I was like, oh, he, he needs a probiotic. So I looked up this probiotic. I bought it off of Amazon. It was very well reviewed. It had like good ingredients in it and everything like that. So it was came in a form of a treat. And stupid me, I made the huge mistake of not looking at the fat content in it. But anyways, we gave him this probiotic, like one a day for three days. And he, like you said, it was like the worst diarrhea ever. And it was bloody. Like it was not even the brown laser. It was like the red laser. And I was like, oh my God. And then I went back oh. to like read the label and it was like crazy high fat content, like in this probiotic treat. So I was like, oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> and I was like, OK, well, like none of this is working. So I decided to do a Google search on like high quality, low fat dog food. So it took me to this website or I found this website where it listed the top 10 high quality, low fat dog foods out there. And um, it was done by this company in southern Ontario called uh, Canadian Pet. Oh, man, I just had up here. Yeah, Canadian Pet Connection. So I'm looking down the list of dog foods that they have, and I'd never heard of like any of them before. And I was like, okay, so I, I looked at the number one one, and it's called Nulo is the dog pet food brand name. Nulo Freestyle Low Fat Dog Food. So now I started to call my, the pet stores in my area. Well, none of them <laughs> carried it. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so there was a chat option like on this website. And <clears throat> I thought that they were like people who ship dog food to you. Like I thought they were like a, like a shipping company or whatever, but I wasn't really sure. And um, I ended up finding one pet food store in my city that sold it. And I went and bought a bag of it. But anyways, I chatted with like I had initiated a chat with this company on the website. So a person got back to me like within an hour or so. And I was just like, oh, I'm just going to tell them like everything. So I was just like, I have this dog. He had recently had a bout of pancreatitis. He's always had dietary like issues. Um, his stools are never, never hard. Like, and we've tried, we've been trying different things and we haven't had like any luck. And then they were like, oh, they're like, um, I forget what they said, but I was just like, are you like a pet food company or like a shipping company? Because <laughs> I may have just like <laughs> been asking for all this like, you know, not medical, but like dog food advice to like people who are literally just like transporters. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. Like we're a pet company. And they started like engaging with me and having a discussion. And they're like, would you like to speak to one of our pet nutritionists? And I was like, oh, my God, yes, that would be amazing. And they're like, okay, they're like, uh, we're, uh, send us your email and we'll have them email you. So the next day I got an email and it was the weekend too. It was like a Saturday. This super nice dude named Brandon, who's part of Canadian Pet Connection, emailed me and said, here's my phone number. I'm, I'm, I'm here today between these times. Give me a call and we'll chat. So I called him up and this guy spent like over an hour on the phone with me talking about like dog food and what to do with his dog and Anyways, Ooh. what he suggested was the problem because he said 
nine times out of 10, when people are telling me about the problems that you're having, if you've tried this food and you've tried that food and you've tried that food and the dog is still not like having dietary issues, like or gastro issues, he said, it's the volume, not the food. So he said, how much are you feeding them? And I said, four cups a day. And he's like, yeah, that's way too much, man. <laughs> and I was like, is it? And he was like, <laughs> and he was like, well, yeah. I'm like, but it's not like I'm overfeeding my dog. Like he's not fat. Like if anything, he's skinny. And when he had his bout of pancreatitis, he literally like, I, he looked like, like a pet rescue commercial, like <laughs> playing like Sarah McLaughlin in the arms of the angel. <laughs> like he was so skinny, like to the point where even my dad who can like, barely see was like he's he, he's getting skinny hides like he's like it's too it's too that's too much like you need to start feed. and i'm like dad i'm trying to but like anyways but um so he said just to give you an idea because like gibbon fluctuates between 60 and 70 pounds he said i have a 150 a 15 pound dog that's super active and i feed him four cups a day and I was like, okay, but like, what do I do about the weight though? And he's like, well, he's like, so here's what I'm going to suggest. And I'm like, so the food that I chose and went and picked up a bag of is the new low freestyle. That was like the number one. He said, that is an excellent food. He's like, and they are like an up and comer in, in the dog food or pet, pet food industry in general, because he's like, they are the only ones that have like a super high quality, low fat food. And it's true because when I went like shopping, like to get Gibbon off of the Science Hills gastro food, which is like total and complete garbage. And he mm -hmm. agreed with me as well. He's like, oh yeah, that's one of the worst. And I was like, exactly. Like I felt horrible, like feeding it to him. Like, even though like his stomach was so upset and he's like, yeah, no, he's like, this company is like excellent. And he's like, and I'll be surprised if you have any issues with it, but he's like, lower the volume. So we've been giving him one cup at each meal. And we did that and like no treats or anything like that in the house, which we're usually pretty good at anyways. We're not like super crazy treat people with our dogs. And if we do, it's like liver, freeze dried liver and that's it. And which I had this discussion with him and he's like, yeah, for sure. You have to be careful with the treats. And <clears throat> anyways, so we've had him on it for a week and for the first time ever, he is consistently solid pooping. Yay. However... I'm seeing the weight come off him already. Like last night, he was like standing at the door looking at les squirrels. <laughs> and um, I could see the ribs starting to, to come out again. Could you start increasing a little bit? Well, and, and that was his suggestion too, was to like go up by like, like a quarter of a cup maybe mm -hmm. and see how that does. So like I was, you know, telling everybody in the household, I was like one cup. Do you understand me? One cup, not a big heaping cup, <laughs> like a level like <laughs> cup. Do you understand? Like, and everybody was on board with it in the house. So it seems to be going well, but we'll see, like, we'll see how, how he does. Like, I'm going to have a good look at him today too. Dog weight, I find, is such a subjective thing. Like, and I remember having this discussion with Michelle because when, like, I remember when I first would pet, like, Nikita and stuff, like, she, I felt like she was too skinny. And she's like, no, she's at the perfect weight. And um, yeah, even, like, and with, these are, like, leaner breeds too, right? Like, she's like a, oh, my God, like, this big, long-bodied, like, foxy mm -hmm. shepherd. Yeah. And Gibbs is a lean breed too, but, like... I remember like Michelle saying it's like when you can start to see the hip bones and like the spine, the spinal like processes, like it, that's when it's starting to get. And there's like photos out there where it shows like, you know, yeah. when they're obese, when you can see the stomach Just coming like... out past like <laughs> yeah. the hip bones. They have no hips. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like a slightly overweight where they're like a little bit like husky looking and stuff like that. And then there's like lean, like which is the perfect, which looks skinny to me yeah but like i i've gotten used to that and accustomed to like what is a perfect weight for gibbon i'm like yes that's perfect and sometimes like when he's like you know really stretched out you can see like a couple of the ribs but for for me it's like i look more for the hip bones and like the spine and and when he had his pancreatitis i'm telling you like you could see like every single like spinal process oh. and like the hip like it looked bad he looked like a rescue like somebody had like <laughs> starved oh, him to death like on the street <laughs> it was i was embarrassed to take him out anywhere because people were probably just like holy crap are you feeding your dog like he looked like a skeletor yeah yeah 
yeah yeah but anyway so hopefully this is going well and i I am monitoring them closely and stuff like that but um Mm -hmm. i wrote up a huge thank you like google review to canadian pet connection and i find that that's amazing what they do man like they're rating you can go and look at them and they rate like all the dog foods and it's like like knowledgeable people who know what they're talking about that's going yeah. through it for you so they're like an excellent resource and just the fact that they were like they chatted with me and then sent me like a pet nutritionist really like I said what can I asked him I'm like what can I give you for your time today like yeah thank you so much and he was like he was like honestly he's like just a google review I was like you got it man <laughs> that's awesome yeah wrote to him check up, him uh, out yes yas canadian yas to canadian pet connection pet connection boop boop boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> so oh that's good i hope it continues to oh god go me, well me too because like like my husband drives me nuts because he's always like i'm like isn't he like the best dog and he's like yeah he's broken though like wish we could get this dog to poop properly i'm like what are you talking about i'm like (laughs) but it it is it's something that you constantly worry about right you're just like yeah what's wrong what can i do to fix it and why isn't anything working so i know when ralph has diarrhea it's kind of like a stress it is you're like what's wrong Mm -hmm. what's What's going on yeah like what am i doing wrong and i think it's because it's like an a total because they can't communicate it's like a reflection of what you are doing so it's like you feel bad right? You you make the mistake of forgetting to look for the fat content on a probiotic that you're trying to help them with and mm. eat, they poop blood like I was like, oh god, I'm so stupid. What did I do? <laughs> yeah, but um, it's definitely, uh, I hope it sorts itself out because I was like, do I go back to raw? Do I do this? But I didn't want to keep fluctuating him around from food to food to food because yeah. that's just going to make it worse. Yeah. So it was just so comforting to talk to Brandon from Canadian Pet Connection. Brandon. That is Brandon from Canadian Pet Connection. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out, everybody. But um, yeah, for sure. Um, and on that note as well. And on that note. <laughs> I have an article yes. that's, that talks about dog diets. So it says dogs on diets similar to their owners. And it was done at the University of Guelph. And they did this global study trying to figure out what's influencing people to buy their dog food. So they found that keto, gluten-free, organic, if a pet owner is on a specific diet, chances are their dog is on it too. And mm. then, But then they get more specifically into the grain-free stuff. And Vero and I were sort of chatting about this. So... Um, they they were fine there was like uh in the u.s i think it was in 2018 they said there was a warning released that the grain-free diets were causing uh dilated cardiomyopathy in dogs so i don't know like they they talk about it basically in this article about how whatever the human diet trends are it directly influences the marketing for dog food which is we all know that to be true yeah. right like yeah in one of our other episodes we talked about pet fooled and that's like the biggest thing and i was saying to vero and even when we went out like looking it's like sweet potatoes were in for a while and it was like sweet potato treats for dogs and try this brown rice and sweet potato diet made especially free dog food food. (laughs) yes exactly and (laughs) gluten-free and i think there's even vegan diets for dogs out there because i remember somebody that i know telling me about how they put their their dog on one and i was like don't get it i don't get but anyways um yeah they asked people where they got the information about dog food and they were just basically looking into what influences people but they 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 spoke mostly to the grain versus no grain and vero you had mentioned that it's with a no grain diet it's more about what they're replacing the yeah the grains with right yeah so i don't know if there's like this is for sure like I don't know Mm -hmm. how much research has been done on this but yeah it's whatever they're replacing the grains with so like lentils and peas and quinoa and potatoes um, are causing the dilated cardiomyopathy Mm -hmm. and not essentially the like lack of grains yeah Mm -hmm. and 
it just like re reiterates how there is no there's not a lot of research done into these pet foods and stuff like that so like people are like influenced into making these choices not having like no evidence so like this is a quote from the study saying this is happening despite there being no scientific evidence that grains are detrimental to the health of dogs marketing strategies in the pet industry may be influencing these attitudes and i'm like uh yeah they yeah. are <laughs> right <laughs> Like, just to go back to Pet Fooled again, like, they did that whole thing about, like, just the packaging and, like, the wording mm -hmm. on the packaging. It's, yeah. like, beautiful homemade turkey dinner for you. And they it's make like it, like... a nice like, turkey. Right. Yeah. Bright colors <laughs> and, like... A corn and Like, with all this and... natural stuff, like, on it. Like, here's this kale diet. And they have, like, these big, like, bushels of kale on the front with sweet potato. And it's, like why does your dog need sweet potato <laughs> <laughs> they don't yeah. they don't but um and all like the wording like what what all of that means well and like, and chicken recipe like what does that mean exactly or meal chicken meal chicken or meal. or a uh, beef product and that's and that type of stuff so mm -hmm. um Anyways, it's just like another thing that I know we, we, we've we talked about pet food before and it's such a big and overwhelming topic. But I think if you can find good resources to go to, if you're have, especially if you're looking at switching foods for whatever reason, whether it's cost or whether it's, uh, you know, issues that you're having with your pooches. Um, <laughs> I know I've said it a, a million times now, but Canadian Pet Connection was an excellent resource. <laughs> and um, the other, we had resources. If you go back to uh, our episodes on pet food, there were, we did a two part one, like sort of like in the beginning mm -hmm. of Let's Boop Snoots. And uh, there was a bunch of resources that we listed on there. Like there's good websites where you can go to where they rate dog foods like out of five stars. And yeah, talk about and they go through like the ingredient list. Do you remember what the name of the website is? I can't um, remember. I think it's Dog Food Advisory. Yeah. I yeah. believe. Yeah. They're pretty good too. I don't know if they have like like chat options and stuff because sometimes it helps mm. like talking to people about what it is, like your specific issues that you're seeing with your dogs and that type of stuff. But anyways, find your resources, know what they are, and then go to them if you're needing help with stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, make sure you're reading labels very carefully before you feed them to your dog. <laughs> Just as a reminder. That's funny. Um, oh. I have one more little bit of news. Yeah. I think last week we talked about how um, I was asked to be a, a referral for yes. one of Matt's family members that was looking to adopt a doggy musket. Mus musket, yes. They went and picked up musket oh, yesterday. Yay he's so cute oh my god he looks like a standard beagle or between like the tiny beagle and oh. he's like sort of like a like a good sized beagle and he's crazy cute and she sent me a video and i had never seen this toy before and we can boop or snoot it right now if you want but i thought it was yeah. super cute so she sent me a video of musket and she said he loves his scent mat so it's like this blanket that you lay on the floor and there's like different pouches or like a flap or whatever. And I don't know whether you put food in it or whatever, but, or you put things in and then they, they sniff at it. So they're like, they're oh. sniffing for it and it's called the scent mat. Or I don't know if you put different things in the different pockets. I'm not really sure. I toys like, maybe? Maybe a toy, maybe a little piece of something, something in one. Maybe like there's like another different spritz of something you can put on something else. Like I wonder. <laughs> But anyways, I thought that was like a super cool I yeah I, a toy for dogs. Yeah. Boop. Yeah, I just it like uses their it's like mental exercise. So they're called snuffle mats. <laughs> oh snuffle mats, yeah. I've heard of those. Yeah. And it's like a scent thing. I wonder like how you so you've heard of them before? There's oh my god, yeah, there's, just there's so different many. ones. There's just so many. You like hide food in it. Okay. And then they have yeah. to go through it. Yeah. It looks like there's different textures and stuff for them. It looks like there's like little pockets. It looks like they take like a whole bunch of like, like ribbony, like pieces of like felt and stuff like that yeah. all together in a big bunch so that they have to like sniff like through it. Like a big flower. Find... Yes. Yes. Ah, I'd Boop. never seen these before. Boop to the snuffle mats. Oh my God. 
there's a picture of a little golden and it's like Aww. a big this one looks like a big bowl snuffle mat and it's just like all layers and layers and layers of stuff for him to snuffle through a the baby snuffle golden. snuffle the baby golden oh my baby golden is growing i know i know oh my I, have God. To, I have to come and see him yes any more tricks uh place Ooh, yeah he's starting to get it good so that's good yeah uh, we're working on stay mm -hmm. he's really good that's good his recall is like almost perfect that's awesome yes like at the dog park he's playing mm -hmm. and i'm like ralph come and he like turns around and he comes and sees me that's awesome yeah how did you do that with just reward long yeah. leash reward nice like i did it i started in the house yeah and then yeah oh. i just we just brought him to the park and he just comes when i call him that's <laughs> awesome yeah the only yeah. time he didn't was mm -hmm. that he was sitting down and looking at somebody who had a treat in her hand oh yeah i could not get his attention <laughs> <laughs> so i mean that's not so bad yeah but I mean, he should be coming, but we yeah. will work on that. Yep. 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 A good one for that might be, do, have you tried the look at me command? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not look at me. No, I haven't. No, no, I have not. Oh, I did okay. like the focusing with the two hands. Yes. But oh, I yeah, didn't good give too. it a, yeah, I didn't give it a name. Okay. Look at me. Yeah. Look, at, look me. at me. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> So I did a quiz. Oh, yeah. So it's a dog breed selector. So it matches dog breeds to your personality. So I got matched with five breeds. Oh, the my The first goodness. one is the St. Berdoodle. <laughs> oh, St. Berdoodle. Is it a St. Yeah. Bernard looking doodle? Yeah. Is it the size of a doodle or a St. Bernard? Well, I guess it's full, depending on the poodle, right? Yeah. The size of the poodle. Yeah. So I got matched with that. I got matched with a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got matched with a schnoodle. <laughs> a sh <laughs> I guess I'm like a... a You're an oodle. oodle. I'm an oodle. You're a veroodle. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last two... <laughs> <laughs> I got matched with a, I I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this right, a Bromol, Brolmer, Brolmer, <laughs> Broholmer. <laughs> They're actually really nice dogs. Yeah. So they look a bit like a Mastiff slash Labrador Retriever. Um, apparently super friendly, super snuggly. They think they're lap dogs. It um, almost looks like a giant lab. Yeah. Like, it just looks like a big beefcake of, a, like, a lab. Mm-hmm. And a light brown color. Yeah. Apparently, they're, like, super friendly. Oh, my God. A broholmer. They could be like, bro come on, bro. You hungry, <laughs> bro? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go for a walk, bro. <laughs> so, the nickname, his nickname was the Butcher's Dog. Because oh. he was always lying at the doorsteps of butcher shops. Wow. Mm -hmm. I could see mm -hmm. that. I can like very easily drum up an image of this bro kicking it outside a butcher <laughs> shop. <laughs> Has a heart of gold, loves to snuggle, and always wants to be near you. <laughs> Though his preference is to sit on you. <laughs> I would, you should get one and call him dude. Be like, he's a dude bro. <laughs> <laughs> dude and he's the last my bro. dog he's my bro dude he's my bro dude <laughs> I should get a girl and call her bra, <laughs> hey, bra. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so okay good. the last dog is a Eurasier yep or Eurasier Eurasier oh Eurasier <laughs> Eurasier. I prefer. It sounds like more sophisticated. Eurasier. Uh, Eurasier. Is that the one that? Yeah, I've seen those before. I think we talked about that on our breeds episode once. Did maybe. we? 
I think we did because it looks like a chow chow and like a husky. Kind yeah. Of. Oh they're my so god. So cute when they're puppies. Oh my god, they are cute when they're puppies. But I found a picture of a really beautiful one in it. He looks like a wolf and a chow chow. Yeah, got together like a fox. and made a yurassie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So yeah, they're I, I medium think it was, size. I think it was one of our Insta dogs because I remember like looking at like this beautiful oh, dog yes. on like on Instagram and yes. being like, what kind of dog is that? And we were like, oh, yeah, it's a USA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're calm, even tempered, gentle, loving, intelligent, and confident. And I read that they're sensitive dogs. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that means, but. Uh, medium size they're beautiful they don't like to be left alone that's the only oh thing but yeah, like yeah but knows? they said that about they said that about yeah. gibbs that has to do with training yeah yes i find the red ones look like foxes they do they're like a foxy chow chow <laughs> <laughs> you foxy a foxy chow chow oh my god they're cute <laughs> they're very cute I think we'll have you know if you go back to our Insta episode, I'm pretty sure we highlighted. Yes, a, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember the name of the dog, but oh my god, beautiful photos, beautiful dog, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. something I ordered from Amazon, is mm -hmm. a. Um, a harness for Ralph where I can put in training uh, oh, patches on it. Yes. Yes. And I got an in training sleeve for the leash. So we don't get people being like, ah, 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 when we're walking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, that is definitely, I never had that with Gibbs, but my, our park was pretty empty. Hmm. There was nobody around. And then when I was taking them out when we weren't training, it was usually where there was like more people that went. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> yes. I was walking in one day and then this lady stopped. She was driving her van. She stopped. And like from behind me, she's like, oh, my God, it's so cute. I, I was like, and then Ralph was doing so good on his walk until that point. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, so like getting a harness. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ralph Aru. Ralph Aru. He's well, so good. Well, I'm glad he's doing so well. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not surprised because you know what to do. I know what to do. Mm hmm. Yes. And Michelle oh. came over for a walking session. Oh, yes. And it went well. It's, it's all about resources and pet mm -hmm. ownership. And everything, mm -hmm. really. Knowing where your resources are, for sure. Yeah. All right. Is that a Is wrap? Is that a wrap? Is that a wrap? I think it's a wrap. <laughs> I think it's a wrap. I think it's a wrap. <laughs> oh, a wrap? <laughs> cool whip. <laughs> All right. Well, join us next time on Let's Let's Boop Snoots. Bye-bye. Boop. Snoots. Boop.